The final team we're going to talk about um, to round out our list is the Utah Jazz. Most now, popular the team Utah, right now. Yeah, the Utah Jazz have been, I think, by far the best team in the league, right? I think we can both say that. They've been the best team in the league so far. They have the league-leading record. Um, and they've taken a significant jump up from where they were last year. They were 10th in offensive rating last year. They're third this year. They were 13th last year in defensive rating. They're second this year. Um, they own the first uh, overall net rating this year, whereas they owned a ninth, uh, ninth net rating last year. So the Utah Jazz overall have just been great everywhere across the board. Um, they've they've been great on the boards. They've they're second in rebounds. Um, they they've been you know the main story about them is that they've been shooting lights out. They've been shooting thirty nine point seven percent from three, which is third in the league. Um, and they're first in three point makes, right? They're first in three point attempts. So if you're shooting that, if you're shooting pretty much 40% from three and you're taking the most threes in the league, that's a recipe for success. Now, again, as I'll talk about, is it really sustainable, especially in the playoffs? We're about to see. Again, this is a very weird year without fans. So maybe it is for this year. Um, but yeah, in terms of specific players, everyone's been great. Rudy, it starts with, you know, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert has been amazing on defense as he always is. He's probably the league leading candidate in defensive player of the year once again. Um, but the change in Rudy Gobert has been his offense, right? He's taking a bigger role on offense. He's been able to attract more attention on his dives. He's been a more willing, uh, dribbler and passer when he gets into the lane. Whereas before, you know, he, if he got the ball and he couldn't get a lob or, you know, get a hook shot. He wasn't going to do anything with the ball. Now he's expanded his game even more. Um, he has much better what he has much better chemistry with a guy like Mike Conley. Um, they've been able to build up their chemistry after a year of working together. Right. So Rudy Gobert starts with Rudy Gobert for the Utah Jazz success. The guy I was just talking about, Mike Conley, after his atrocious start last year, he's been absolutely brilliant this year. He's returned to Mike Conley form. He's built up a better chemistry with Rudy Gobert, whereas where now he's being able to find him on those lobs, on those dives to the rim, um, whereas before he was kind of more used to the, those short rolls and those pick and pops with Marc Gasol. So now he's being able to build up that rapport with Rudy Gobert, and he's shooting much better for them. Um, Jordan Clarkson, he's been the sixth man of the year so far, and as we predicted, I think we're right on our prediction that he will be the sixth man of the year this year, um, averaging 18.3 points on 45 points. 0.7% shooting and 38%, 38% from three. Jordan Clarkson has been absolutely amazing as the Utah Jazz bench gunner. Didn't he have like a 40-point game off the bench? Yeah, he did. He did. Jordan Clarkson has been absolutely yeah. amazing for the Utah Jazz. Um, another guy that's kind of been lost in the shuffle is Derek Favors. Now, I was very surprised that the Utah Jazz were able to sign Derek Favors. And I was also excited that the Utah Jazz signed Derek Favors because of the fact that now with Derek Favors coming off the bench for you, it allows you to, to play the exact same way that they would with Rudy Gobert there on the court. Obviously, he doesn't have the same magnitude of, as Rudy Gobert, but Utah's allowed to play the same way. Whereas before, when Rudy Gobert checked out games last year, you know, you'd have to play a completely different way with, for example, you know, Tony Bradley coming to the game or whatever. You know, you couldn't play the exact same way with Rudy Gobert not on the court. Now that you have Derek Favors, you're allowed to run the exact same system because Derek Favors can kind of be a worse version of Rudy Gobert on the court. And then finally, you know, Boyan Bogdanovich being great as usual, Joe Ingles, Royce O'Neal, George Niang. And of course, they have their all-star Donovan Mitchell, who's doing his Donovan Mitchell thing. So overall, the Utah Jazz have been absolutely great. Um, they've had another season of building their chemistry up, which has allowed their coach, Quinn Snyder, to open up his playbook even further and allow those guys to flourish. Um and I think the main question for them is, I've seen it a bit, you know, is, are they the next 2015 Atlanta Hawks or are they the next 2014 San Antonio Spurs? I think that's a very good argument to be had. Um, obviously, we're not going to be able to find out until the playoffs. And when it comes to the playoffs, issues I think exist for the Utah Jazz where they kind of lack the firepower um, now, again, they are shooting great this season, but in terms of individually, I think they do kind of lack firepower, especially when they're going up against like uh, the, the Clippers, the Lakers, you know, the Denver Nuggets. You could see them struggle, have some problems to keep up with the scoring output. Um, so, and then obviously, you know, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is the catalyst, the main uh, part of this team. 
but we've seen that he's had his issues in the playoffs when teams specifically target him and make him come to the perimeter and try to abuse him on the perimeter. So, you know, we're going to see if Quinn Snyder can mitigate some of those issues this year in the playoffs. Um, And then finally, one more point. Every loss that the Utah Jazz have had is when a team was able to outshoot the Utah Jazz. Meaning the Utah Jazz, though they've been great, have kind of been limited in the success that they've had, where if a team is able to outshoot them, the Utah Jazz have not been able to kind of work around it and play a different style in order to win. So their wins have kind of been at the same the same way over and over again, which is fine in the regular season, but we know with game planning uh, every single day in the playoffs and scouting at an all-time high, the Utah Jazz will have to adapt game to game. And so far, um, it's a recurring question of whether they'll be able to do that in the playoffs. Um, for me personally, and then I'll let you go, I think the Utah Jazz have been great. Uh, I like watching them. Unfortunately for me, it's just ah, the Clippers and Lakers are just there, man. I, I think I'm just going to have to say, until I can see with my own eyes, because this has kind of been a recurring theme for the Utah Jazz, but until I be, I can see it with my own eyes, I'm going to unfortunately have to classify Utah as a pretender. Now, I'd love for them to be an actual contender, but again, I have to see with my own eyes, to be honest. I've actually, you know, quietly followed the Utah Jazz for quite for a little bit of time now. Um, and... I've always like I've always kind of admired what they've been doing from from afar. I really liked the, the acquisition of Donovan Mitchell. I thought that was an amazing amazing move by the front office. Uh, Gobert has been fantastic. Uh, even the Mike Conley move that we that we talked about on on on, an, on a previous episode when it first happened, we actually really liked it for the Jazz. We thought that's exactly what they need. And even some of the role players, getting Boyan Bogdanovich, amazing signing. Royce O'Neal was a great developmental role player who has really established a good a good role in their system. And, you know, Joe Ingles has been has doing his Joe Ingles thing. Joe Ingles has always been a fantastic player uh, in this league. And then not to mention you bring you bring in a guy like Jordan Clarkson, six a six man of the year candidate, and has been has given you that spark plug off the bench, which filled a weakness Utah had in previous seasons where they didn't really get another a lot of secondary scoring. Now they got that. Then they, they went out and they fixed an issue they had last season where, you know, they didn't really have a good backup center behind Gobert. Well, now you have Derek. You went and got Derek Favors back. So the Utah has slowly but sh- kind of put together a pretty solid roster, you know, on both ends of the floor. And I think now you're seeing kind of everything kind of click together for them where, you know, they're getting the scoring on top of the defense. Then you're getting the shooting. Now you're getting the consistency. And this is a team, man. Like, this is a team with a good coach. They move the ball. They play the game the right way. They have a young stud who is their main option. You also have a defensive anchor in the paint. Then you have a secondary, you have a secondary guard who facilitates a couple of scores and Bogdanovich and uh, Jingles. And I'm not going to lie. I really, really like this team, man, on paper. I think from a depth standpoint, from an overall, like just constru- roster construction standpoint, this is probably one of the best examples I've seen so far in the league. Um, and it shows, man. It just shows that when you build a team the right way, like, and you develop them, you give them time to grow you can see the the benefits to that. And the Jazz have been great this season. Now, I, am I going to say I've watched every single Utah Jazz game? No. I haven't really been following them. But I've seen their record, and the numbers don't lie. You know, the fact that they're like 25-6 and six right now of a record mm-hmm. is pretty insane right now. Like that, They've beaten good teams as well. They've beaten good teams, man. Like they, they, They've established themselves as, you know, being legitimately a good team this season. But I think... It comes right back to your point that you made about is this a, 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 an instance of the 2015 Hawks who great has a great regular season only to flame out in the playoffs or 24? I mean, they didn't fl- they didn't flame out. They ran to LeBron. <laughs> oh yeah, we had that for the Raptors like every single year. But regardless, the, the the Hawks didn't play great in the playoffs that year, anyways, to begin with. Or are you the 2014 Spurs, which means that you're the start of a pretty consistent uh, dynasty? 
you know, or being able to be a championship team that built your team the right way. So I don't know. Like, I think I would love for them to be a, you know, a contender because I think they have a lot of the great the pieces put in place. But man, you're going up against LeBron and AD, uh, Kawhi and PG, and I, I just, I don't know if you, if this team is has the the talent to 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 overcome that. And so for now, I'm gonna have to put them as a pretender as well, man. But just based on that fact that how realistic is it for them to win a championship? Sure, they have all the pieces to do it. But is it realistically going to happen? The odds are kind of heavily against it. And that's what it comes down to, right? We're not defining contender as someone who has championship aspirations because clearly Utah wants to win a championship and they're in a prime position to do it. But it's whether or not we think they're in that top, top, top tier of championship contenders. It's right? also if they're going to win. Like if you're not going to yeah. win a championship, you're not really a contender. If you don't have a legitimately legitimate and realistic case to win a championship, you're not really a contender, you know? Exactly. And then before uh before people start going crazy about me comparing it to the 2014 Spurs, I'm not saying the players are the same obviously, you know, Tim Duncan and Kawhi Leonard and whatnot. But I'm I'm talking from the sense of a great team with very good players who are not at their peak, right? Kawhi Leonard was not at his peak yet, and Tim Duncan and Tony and Manu were declining by that time. But a bunch of very good players who play very well as a team, right? That's yeah. what I mean, and are able to win a championship, whereas Atlanta was not able to win a championship. That's what I mean about the 2014 Spurs. So don't don't come after me, oh, dude, I, I'm saying Rudy Gobert is next Tim Duncan or something. They're also a deep team. Like that's another comparison you can make to that to that Spurs team is that this Utah team is a very deep team, and you need depth in the playoffs. Like I don't care what anybody says, you need like sure start like the playoffs is where stars shine. Yeah, but you need supporting players. You need good role players, and Utah has some good role players, man. 